Our gathering song is from Voices United number one, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verse seven. O come, desire of nations, find the peoples in one heart and mind. O bid our sad division cease, and before us the Prince of Peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Listen, listen for a messenger from God. The way is being prepared for Christ's coming. We are here to listen for a word from God. We have gathered to prepare for Christ's coming. Come with your joys and sorrows, laughter and tears. Come, for among these people there is a place for you. We give thanks for Christ's redeeming love we are glad God is doing great things among us. Grace and peace to you. Good morning. Welcome to our weekly online worship here at Crossroads United Pastoral Charge. Welcome to our friends in Elm Creek and Carmen Districts. Welcome to our friends from far and near who join us for worship each week. It is good to share this time of worship with you. We are thankful for all the people who helped put together this worship. Thank you, Phil, for your gift of singing. Thank you, Karen Jaden, for introducing our Advent candle lighting. Thank you, Laura, Paisley, and Wyatt, for lighting the first and second Advent candles. Thank you, Emily, for reading our scripture lesson from the Gospel of Mark. Thank you, Karen McGill, for the creative way you put all the songs and videos together. You are deeply appreciated. The church office is closed to the public, but the work of being the church in the world continues. This Christmas season, we want to acknowledge the reality of loss and grief by inviting people to place the names of people or pets that we have lost on a memorial Christmas tree which has been decorated in the courtyard of Carmen United. And if you would like to participate, you can stop by and place a star on the tree yourself. Please bring a permanent marker to write on your star. Or contact Karen Jaden, 204-745-6477, uh, or the church office at 204-745-6835 to have a star placed on the tree in memory of the one you have lost. The memorial tree is available to anyone in the community to participate. The Sunday schools of St. Andrews and Carmen United are working on a virtual Christmas pageant. Watch for it close to Christmas Eve. We are thankful for the people who keep us safe. This past week, we remembered first responders and medical clinics. This week, we will remember the employees of the Carmen of the Co-op Grocery, Gas Bar, and hardware who serve us faithfully week after week. We hope to spread prayers and baked goods throughout our community in the weeks to come. Blessings to you and your family, and blessed be the tie that binds. Our opening hymn is from Voices United number 18, There's a Voice in the Wilderness. in the wilderness crying a call from the ways untrod prepare in the desert a highway a highway for our God the valley shall be exalted the lofty hills 
has brought glory. Make straight all the crooked places where God our God may go. O Zion, that bringest good tidings, get thee up to the heights and Desolate people, the coming of the King. Like the flowers of fields, they perish. Like grass, our works decay. The power and the pomp of nations shall pass like a dream of. But the word of our God endureth, whose arm is ever strong. God stands in the midst of nations and soon will right our wrong. God shall feed the flock like shepherds. of peace will lead them and bring them a safe to fold. There's a voice in the wilderness crying, a call from the ways untrod. Prepare in the desert a highway, a highway for our God. The valley shall be exalted, the lofty hills brought low. Make straight all the crooked places where God our God Jesus was born into a world that on an elemental level was much like our own. He felt the earth beneath his feet, the sun on his face, experienced the wind on the water, and the rain falling to nourish the soil. The lakes, seas, sun, wind, moon, and stars were all part of his life. He looked up and saw the glory of the night sky, just as we do. He gave thanks for trees and growing things, just as we do. In this season of gifts and giving, we recognize the deep blessing of the world around us. With gratitude, we anticipate the birth of Jesus, the one who came to show us the way of hope, peace, joy, and love. The wind is blowing back and forth. Can you hear it? You can't tell where the wind comes from or where it goes. Sometimes the wind blows like a gentle breeze, and other times it is so strong. That way, or that's the way it is with everyone who is born of God's Spirit. John chapter 3, verse 8. We often connect the Holy Spirit with the wildness of the wind. May the breath of God's Spirit give us the faith and strength to continue our Advent journey to Bethlehem.
Let us pray. Spirit of God's energy of life, hear our prayers as continue our Advent journey together. Whenever you lead us, wherever you need us, give us faith to trust in your guidance, as Mary did and Joseph did, as the wise ones did too. Amen. sky, promise of hope held high. This is our sacred living trust, treasure of life, sanctified, called by earth and sky. Precious the gift, the scripture reading is from Mark 1, verses 1 to 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was cloaked with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. May God bless to our understanding this reading from the Holy Scripture. Good morning. The season of Advent is a, a wonderful time to check in with one another. So I'm going to begin this sermon with a, a bit of a check-in. How are you doing? How is your family doing? How are the people at your work doing? Are the people you love, are they, are they being good to each other? Or are, are they feeling a bit frazzled? Oh, thanks for asking. I, I think that I'm okay most of the time. But then there are days. Well, it, sometimes it feels like I get nothing done. I'll tell you, I've heard lots of people when I ask, when I check in with them, they'll say that they're struggling. They are grieving. I've heard a host of people, young and old, parents and grandparents, where they have said something like, I am just so done. If you find yourself struggling with how you are feeling on the inside, I hope this sermon and the songs we sing will, will bless and encourage you to keep on, keep on the path that God is preparing for you. Might we pray? 
Holy, holy, holy are you, our God. There is none other like you. You know the concerns of our hearts. We thank you for your loving care, for watching over us all of our days. On the good ones and even the not so great ones, you watch over us. And so we pray, keep us loving, O God. Bless us with the gift of your living word. May it wash over us and refresh us in the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. And I want to say thank you, Emily, for reading our scripture lesson today. It was wonderful to see you. Emily read the story about John the Baptist preparing the way. And did you hear what John was wearing? John is dressed in nothing but a, a heavy animal skin, a, a camel hair robe cinched around his waist with a, a thick leather belt. Can you picture him? Kind of wild looking, isn't he? Kind of rough looking. You might mistake John the Baptist for a bit of a wild man or a, a mountain man. John did not seem to care what other people thought about his appearance. Now, you just, you try going shopping wearing nothing more than an animal hide tied around your waist with a heavy belt and see how many friends you have. If you did, you might find that the other shoppers keep their distance. It's interesting, then, that the story remembers how people from the, the whole Judean countryside and, and all the people of Jerusalem were streaming into the desert to listen to the voice of this rough-looking prophet to, to lean into his message, to be honest and to confess their sins, the things they had done and the, the things they had left undone, and then to be baptized by John into a changed life. Don't you find that interesting? John was, was rough looking on the outside, but that didn't seem to matter because, well, all kinds of people were, were drawn to him anyways. You might expect a, a charismatic speaker with the, the power to draw huge crowds would be more concerned about how he or she looked and what they wore. But apparently John was not. The camel hair robe, it, it seemed to work for him. And I wonder if that rough exterior made John more approachable. People didn't seem to care how, how John looked on the outside. What mattered was his message, God's love, that changed how people thought of themselves. John's message changed people from the inside out. Now, how much time do you and I spend fussing about our outward appearance? You know, a month ago, I needed a haircut before the province went into this lockdown. And I've been making jokes ever since that if this goes on any longer, I might need to get a wig or to ask Santa for a home hairstyle kit for Christmas. You know, we worry about our hair or if our teeth are white enough, our, our hair is brown enough, our skin's tanned and tight enough. But if I were to take John the Baptist's lead, 
I'd forget about what my hair looks like or, or whether my tie matches my shirt and, and get myself a, a camel hair robe and a thick belt to tie around my waist. The trouble is, we can fix our hair. We can order up a new wardrobe. We can spend a, a fortune on our teeth so that we look perfect on the outside. But we still might feel rough on the inside. And there are a lot of people in this world who look like they have everything together on the outside, but inwardly they are suffering greatly. John the Baptist rough on the outside, spoke a powerful message how God's love changes and heals us on the inside. John could read people. He knew the things that, that make us feel rough and raw on the inside. Things like guilt and shame poverty and isolation, unforgiveness and deep disappointments. John knew that he was, that he was preparing the way. John, John saw himself sort of as a, a forerunner, part of an advance team that would get hearts and minds ready for the good news that was about to come into the world. And so, you remember that part of the story where it says that the people came to the Jordan River confessing their sins? I wonder if these people were, were coming to check in with John. They trusted him. You know, it's good to check in with people we, we love and trust. It's one way that we, we care for one another. John was someone who would listen and would tell the people how they were feeling on the inside. And when they were ready, John would invite them to let go of their old lives and, and everything that was holding them back so that they might begin anew within a changed life. What John had to offer, the, the promise of God's unfailing love, it made people feel new inside. And these crowds of people at the Jordan River, they might have looked shabby, but after checking in with John, they shone like new. Just think, if you'd carried a burden of guilt all your life and suddenly you experienced the grace of, of being forgiven, well, that, it would make you a new person. If you'd begun your life believing that no one wanted you and then one day you heard the message, God's love, that you are precious and valued in God's sight. That kind of news could change everything. The poet and prophet Maya Angelou famously said, people may forget what you said and people may forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. And I say this because countless people today are grieving a loss that they can hardly name. They are done, done with this old life and longing for something new. Sometimes we can be very good at making ourselves feel guilty for how we feel. We even feel guilty about feeling done. 
I shouldn't be feeling so sad. There's so much I should be thankful for. I shouldn't still be grieving this. I need to get over it. I shouldn't be feeling this way. But I still do. And so I say to you, be gentle on yourself and with the people you love. Because of this upside down year, we are missing so much. Acts of kindness and, and those simple rituals we would normally use to heal our wounded spirits. You know, cups of tea and late night conversations around a fire. Funerals to celebrate the lives of exceptional people. Birthdays where we couldn't blow out a candle. So many family gatherings postponed. And the joy of singing hymns and gathering together as God's people. One of the gifts, though, of 2020 are the sometimes the, the old and new ways we are discovering to, to encourage one another. People are using their phones and letters and computers in new ways that, that can actually be a lot of fun and, and lift our spirits. I'll tell you a story. My, my brother was telling me how he and his children, who, who live far away in other provinces, they've begun playing cards on Zoom. Now, who would have thought? We're going to need more of that kind of imagination to get us through this crazy time and to, to keep on going. Advent is the perfect time to check in with one another and to just listen. Check in with your neighbor down the street or with the person who sat next to you in church. Use whatever means you have to check in. Use your phone, text, Zoom, or an old-fashioned letter. Give it a try. You'll be surprised by how good it feels. And sometimes people just need a safe place to vent and to name the grief that they are carrying. And you and I don't have to know all the answers, but know this, your gift of listening will set people free and change lives. When you offer a safe place where people can be heard, you're following in John's footsteps and standing with people who struggle that they may experience the incredible news of God's redeeming love. Grace and peace to you this day in the compassionate name of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us gather our hearts and minds in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we, we lift up to you the, the places and people in our lives and in our world where, where hope is needed. We give thanks for the hope we see in the eyes of our children and grandchildren, in, in the young people who greet us on the street. We give thanks for those who work in our world in hope for a better future, even in the face of danger. Be with those who wait in hope, gracious God. Those who wait and hope for meaningful work, for peace, for nourishing food and safe housing, for clean water and safe communities, 
for answers to prayer and for healing. Gracious God, hear our prayer, and in your love you answer. O Holy One, we would pray for people far and near, for neighbors in our midst, and for people in Central America who are recovering from the hurricanes. We pray for your beloved children suffering from conflict in the Middle East. Be with them and with us, gracious God, God of hope. Hear our prayer, and in your love you answer. God of peace, we lift up to you the places and people in our lives and in our world where peace is needed. We bring before you our prayers for, for all who are in need of your peace, whether it be in our hearts, in our lives, in our families, between neighbors, or in countries and nations around the world. God, we pray for the workers at Genesis House who provide counseling and safe shelter for women and families escaping abuse. We long to know and experience true peace, O oh God, a peace that, that passes understanding, that dwells in our hearts and reaches the depth of our souls. And we offer to you, O oh God, our longing for peace, and pray that you may be with us and use us as servants of your peace. Gracious God, hear our prayer, and in your love you answer. God of joy, you have blessed us in so many ways. Thank you for the way that you bring joy into our lives through those who touch us, and through the new life you offer in Jesus Christ. Thank you for the opportunity to share our joy with acts of kindness and generosity. Help us to be thankful for those joyful times in our lives. And God, we are glad to bring some joy to the workers at our our co-op grocery store and gas bar and hardware who work so faithfully in these challenging times. We pray for their safety and health and wish them well in this busy season. Lots of us are struggling, O oh God, where there seems to be no joy in us, be with us in our pain and distress, that we might know your presence and trust that we will again know the joy faithful living can bring. God of joy, hear our prayer, and in your love you answer. Holy and gracious one, we would pray for those who are ill this day at home, in hospitals, in personal care homes. We pray for those who are close to us, who are hospitalized or recovering from the COVID virus, and for their families. God, we pray for all who mourn the loss of loved ones in this time, for those who are waiting for an opportunity to safely gather to celebrate those lives. Grant to all of your people your healing, your hope, your peace, and your presence. Gracious God, hear our prayer, and in your love you answer. God of hope, God of peace, God of joy, 
be with us, guiding us and urging us forward as we continue to wait and watch for your coming into our lives again and again as we journey to Bethlehem. And so together we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 Our closing hymn is from Voices United number 44. It came upon a midnight clear. It came upon the midnight clear that glorious song of old from angels bending near the earth to touch their hearts of gold peace on the earth good will to all from hands all gracious king the world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing unfurled and still their heavenly music floats o'er all the weary world above its sad and lonely plains they bend on hovering wing and for worshiping with us today. We hope that you can join us next week for the third Sunday in Advent when we light the candle of joy. Be safe and be encouraged. Blessings to you. Our choral dismissal 
Voices United 964, go now in peace. Go now in peace, go now in peace. May the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. Go now in peace, go now in peace. Go now in peace, go now in peace. May the 